perfect because I always forget to do that at the beginning. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You know, sorry for that little technical snafu. I, I like to try and use my laptop for these things. Yeah, I mean, and I've too. gotten so used to my iPad that that works flawlessly. I would like to use it there because once the um, sessions are over, it breaks the file down on Zoom into a place where I know where to find it so I can find the audio in the video file. So the video goes to YouTube and the audio goes to podcasts. And right. here, it's not that easy for me to figure out where the hell did you hide this on my iPad? But, <laughs> but I haven't used works Zoom in a while, better. so it, it could have been me too. I don't know. But I called no. tech support, which is my partner, and she came in and fixed it. So. <laughs> it wasn't on you. That was totally on me. Um, okay. I've been trying to figure out the best way to do these because I want a place where people can interact. The yeah. first podcast was more of an interview, and that was great. Yeah, uh, I saw that. There wasn't really time to pay attention to the chat box, but we're learning that. And then the last one, I thought, okay, well, I see that there's ways to take Zoom and then stream it through YouTube so you can pay attention to those um, chat um, responses right. in real time. Right. But that really requires somebody paying attention to that on its own yeah. so that it can be addressed so that right. you can just go on about your thing. Right. Anyway, it, I just concluded that if I really want to be interactive, that this is the best platform to do that. I, I think can hear so. you. Um, I can see you, you can hear me. Yep. So until we exceed the place where my license at 100 yes. won't support everybody that shows up, great to that day. But now we're accomplishing what I wanted to be able to do. And that right. was for people to reach out and ask questions when right. they had them. So today, right. we it's just me and you so far. Well, that's it's, we're awesome not limited for me. to anything. I I, you can really set the agenda for what you want. Okay, to so I have so much going on, and I I relate so much to so much that's happened to you is crazy. But um, on dark crystals, okay. So this is this is something new to me. I'm a pretty big crystal guy. They're all over the place, but um, never heard of these things, right? And so I started looking into them almost ordered some and then i got into all this slag glass stuff and it's all a scam and etc with mickey and everything so i was like well i don't know i've i trust Lowell. i mean i i'm pretty intuitive and psychic and my feeling about you is you're legit i feel like your story is legit i may be totally taken but that's what i'm feeling from you so that's good when you were talking about these things and the um and the powder stuff too and everything it was like i really feel like this is in my story and so i need to get to a comfort level where i can you know take the take the step and spend hundreds of dollars on, on possibly a piece of glass but i told somebody yesterday i was like at this point it's worth it because i just want to feel one like if it's a scam, okay, I got taken. It won't be the first time I've gotten taken for a whole lot more than a couple hundred bucks before. So, um, but I did uh, want to have the chance to talk to you, which this is a real gift, this situation right now. So um, this is awesome. So let me address a couple of things. Yeah. In yeah. fact, um, Andars are really fresh on my mind Great. because I just finished the book. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw had your book a tear over the weekend that just the situation was right. It was just a matter. And I'd always said this, you journaled everything along the way. You just need to take that stuff and you just put it all together. Right. So that with all the pictures that I've taken along the way, it's done. Yesterday finally got done. It's been published. And so um, I self published it in a place yeah. where if you have to have a printed book, bless your hearts, they're it's not going to be pricey, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> However, if you just want the ebook, which is my recommendation, just pay five ninety nine and go get that. Same yeah. thing. Right. Uh, anyhow, when it I gets had, to when it gets to Amazon, will the price be less same than price? Oh, okay. Five ninety nine for it uh, if you wanted an e you know book download too, and that'll be on the Amazon 
starting September 5th, I guess they cycle, you know, once a month on the 5th. And so whatever's new gets, gets cycled there. But okay. I put a link on my website where you can go get it directly from the source where I printed it and you can get it from there. Anyhow, um, that was all to tell you this. I had to review all that about Andara's all over again. And it's funny that all this came together because I hadn't talked to Mickey for a while until this morning. All right. Yeah. Um, right. Synchronicities everywhere. What you were describing about the things that you set you on the path to go learn about Andaras were exactly the same as mine. I'm a Capricorn and I have loved rocks. We used to go to the science museum when I was a kid. Everybody else got models. I got rocks, right? Yeah. Just like you. And like you, I hadn't heard anything about Andara crystals ever until by accident, I thought that I was looking for something special for a friend of mine. And I don't know why it was green I was looking for. I searched on eBay to look for such a thing. And the first thing that came up had Andara in the label. When you went on to read the description of metaphysically what this thing is capable to do, if you understood that and you believed it, wow, these things have some power. Well, whoever did it, and knew every you know button every to push. buzzword <laughs> every buzzword and understood it all and compiled it all in one place right there however um it was going to take me a while before i found out i got taken and that yes there is actual energy that's palpable in the real thing you will tell the difference and i suspect largely steve it's because they carry consciousness not yeah. just like every other crystal that you and I have grown to love and we understand how they work. You can imbue those crystals with your intent and it's your job to amplify it in the ways that's special for them. On Dars, they're like a best friend with mm. access to the entire, <laughs> all of their brothers and sisters and all of their Akashists. So, you know, when I look at energy exchanges, I always see them as that in exchange. So when you're holding one, getting what you're meant to from it, she is also, you contribute to what she carries too. That's why if you look at these as stewarding them rather than owning them, because yeah. we never really do. That's how I look at, that's how I look at everything, <laughs> my property and everything else. So I'm just yeah. passing through, right? These things are more permanent than I am. Uh, you, you know what if you want to go i've tried to go down that rabbit hole to figure out god if, if there was any way to really know how long that they were here and, you know the earliest accounts i can feel you know, just nelly was in 1967 right. when the first things were recorded about it at all and even back then no one knew what it was right over time when we were meant to understand what it was where it came from what it consisted of, and what its real purpose is, this is here to help you unlock your DNA. It's been stored with that codex since whenever, and it was put where it was put because of there was a dimensional overlap that allowed wherever this stuff came from, because this is not Earth material, and tucked it in this place, that in South Africa. And, you know, I, I tend not to be as rigid as Mickey when it comes to others, because there have been others that have come along. And it's not that because I've seen some that came from China, right? Yeah, I saw them in a shop in Mount Shasta. And I got to admit, they held the charge, but not like authentic ones that I have and I've held. Mm. Um, so I think they'll hold the charge. That's probably fair to say, but they're not authentic ones like I've got. And Mickey always says, you, you got to trace it back to the source on where it came from. If you really want to understand if it was authentic. And if it is, then you're going to find it in the same place. You're going to find Ethereum power because they're one and the same. That was fused there. That's when you know when you hear it came from a place that's got that they're authentic. Between this, you know, whatever that place is where Nelly lived and, you know, it's going to be secret until, you know, forever. Yeah. Um, and whatever is in South Africa. I have read some channelings that were done in the mid nineties by people that knew Nelly really well. It's how they got their hands on any of this stuff. And when they began researching it and channeling, you know, for some higher references about it, 
that's when they learn what they learned about it then. And um, it, <laughs> it's prima matra, it's creation material. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when you understand how to, um, from an alchemistic standpoint, transmute that stuff, if you take the base metals that are in it, you can transfer white, transmute it into gold. That's what it, that's what it does. Um, the other base metals, it was interesting to learn how the other crystals took on color. Because I don't know what the base metals are for rubies and sapphires and things that are different colors. Right. But what triggers the Andaras is when it picks up that trace metal in whatever this monatomic heap of it is that's what color it changes and i've seen them in all different colors yeah. my perspective is still oh, anyway to, to finish that statement it had indicated in there because one of the questions they asked is are these the only two sources of this stuff ever and they said they are for today but there will be other places where you will find it when the day comes that it's necessary for you to do so so i'm not ruling out that it can't be found in other places that would be kind of silly um so what in your opinion what's the role of the ethereum powder versus the crystal versus the andara well they do one and the same they both are here to assist unlocking your dna that's the codex that this really its purpose and that's what it holds but it connects because it's a consciousness to every other one of its brothers and sisters and all of the codes that they carry. So imagine what access you have when you hold these in your hand. The same energy that's in a crystal is the same stuff that was in the original power. So if I remember your story, so I came across you like a year ago and then you kind of disappeared. And then uh, you just came across my feet or something the other day and I was like, I know that guy. Where do I know that guy from? And I went back and, oh, he was the guy who had this experience in Middle Earth, right? So if I remember correctly, Ethereum is what you were given that kind of unlocked you. Is that correct? And It was was an accelerator. I'm not saying that that was the purpose and that's what it did in its own. Because you'll get the same accelerator result from just possessing and holding an Andara. The energy is the same. It's just energy, right? Just energy. The fact that I was ingesting it had different effects on my physicality. And that's what the difference was. So the Ethereum gold stuff, those tablets, that's what did it for you? Yeah. No. No. I was given raw Ethereum. Uh, 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 I was gifted the real deal. That makes that makes a lot a lot more sense to me. I didn't really feel that Ethereum gold stuff. Like I haven't tried it, but I looked at it and I was like, I'm just not feeling this. I don't know what's wrong. But um the Ethereum powder itself, if you were given this stuff just like where the crystals came from, that makes a whole whole lot more sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now, here's the thing, Steve. <laughs> how did that cross my path and why was it gifted to me right those are you know that's a whole nother rabbit hole everything happens for a reason everything happens for a reason there are no totally understand it but i like to understand it i'm a capricorn (laughs) with logic (laughs) and damn it i need to make sense of it i like to understand right i I like equations so but this isn't an equation kind of experience really so now i let's address that ethereum gold because i want to kind of set the record straight sure i've read some of the research that's been done and the guy that originally took that formula had got it from samples that came from nelly's property from these two people that had channeled this information he was they were the common link between l and um um, nelly and this guy, I can't remember his name, David something. I'm so this sure I'll think of it. Created, um, yeah, why, they had uh, you know taken it and to the degree that science could figure out what was in it. That's how we know how many trace metals are in it. But there's a lot of stuff in raw Ethereum that we have no idea what it is and what it contains. Yeah. But we're not no, ready this, for what this reminds in. me a lot of food, right? Like you can kind of try to duplicate the vitamins or something in something, or you can just eat a carrot. There's a lot yes. of other stuff in the carrot that you don't completely understand. No one really understands. 
but right. to try to synthesize it or duplicate is always very difficult. So yeah, now they say that people that have been in studies that have taken this replicant, I have they've had um, it's not relief. It's just all of a sudden you have a wherewithal of things that you don't know how you knew it, but you do. So I don't want to say that the stuff isn't worth it because um, the reports on research would say differently. And that's great. If it works great. to even a little degree, then it's, it's worth it. Um, now, I yeah. there used to be a source because after Nellie was gone, she's been gone for 15 years. I think her kids we're still selling raw Ethereum to other sources. Um, but I don't know that that relationship happens anymore. And if you're like me and you've done any kind of research to find it, you can't find it. Yeah, yeah. So that answers a lot of things. So probably if I'm, if I'm going to take a shot at the Ethereum, that is going to be the same shot as, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Andara, if I'm going to get an Andara, I don't need to worry about the Ethereum as a additional step or anything that I need to chase. Yeah. Okay. No, the energy that's in it is in it. And okay. Dara's are made from that material. So they carry the same qualities. And here it's in a wonderful physical form that you can hold. Some people like to wear it so they make it jewelry. Some like to put it in their palm and meditate with it. Some like to you know, hold bigger pieces. Um, I don't think they're meant to be museum pieces. I don't think they need to. Yeah, they're yeah. meant to be put on a shelf. I think they're healing things, and really, they're yeah. to heal yourself, to kind of crack open what it is that is meant for you that you're supposed to be remember. That's why I think they're coming to our rescue now, and that is my friend. Why you and I didn't know about things like that long ago right. when we should have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I trust the process, right? So like things drop into my path exactly when they need to drop into my path. It, it, it doesn't serve any purpose to uh, get frustrated about whether you haven't gotten something or you have gotten something or you, or you, you know, why didn't I get it earlier or whatever. It, <laughs> it, it, it well, that's our 3D mind trying to make it sense out yeah. of it. And In retrospect, it's always perfect. So I'm... Yeah. I'm grateful for your information. It's it's unique, I think, uh, as far as I can tell right now. I mean, it's you're the only guy that I know of talking about this right now, and I think it's super intriguing to me. I mean, all my antennas went up when I heard your old video, um, and so I'm positive that I'm going to take a shot at it. <laughs> like I said, I'm, you know, I'm going to get it from Mickey because that seems to be the most legitimate source the the uh, um, a crystal i look i would still point you back to mickey every time okay. and yeah. the reason is i know they came from nelly's property everything yeah. he has left uh, and he has a pretty good sized archive still left he all that came from that property we know yeah. that they're authentic and i'm not saying you can't get pretty ones from somewhere else or the people haven't sourced them from mickey and you know, made them available in other ways. But if you wanted me to tell you the one place I can tell you with absolute certainty, it's gonna be authentic when you get it, it'll be from Mickey. And he'll guide you through the process. You know, I still believe the best way to find them is to go to the place and sure. one will or more <laughs> will call out to you. I gotta when say, when I saw likely? Mickey, when I saw Mickey's spiral, I almost jumped on a plane. <laughs> I mean, that, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty appealing looking. That experience. He's done some. There. I've witnessed some healing things that have been done on that spiral with some people because he has a way to charge it in another way, with, um, some other device that's been created. And he used to have a, a tent there. So if you wanted to camp overnight on the spiral, I, that's where I started wow. my relationship. Nice. I spent a weekend next to the spiral. Wow. And yeah, you came <laughs> away with all that energy and understood what it was. It was great. Um, but he'll take you through the process. He can talk to you about what it is that you, know, you want and not just colors. Because if I left it to colors, <laughs> there's a lot of them that are just not available anymore. You know, everybody wanted the pretty colors first, but that yeah. doesn't take anything away 
from Seafoam, which she still has a pretty good cache of. And these beautiful, when we started to go to these bucket cleaning parties at Mickey's, because uh, he had five gallon buckets full of these things that hadn't been gone through in a while. And when we did, we found a lot of champagne colored. Now, um, it's kind of clear but there's bubbles in these things and the denser, you know, the more energy to me, it seems to have, but they came in hues. Some had a little blue in it. Some had a little yellow in it. Some had a little green. They were amazing. So mm. those things are really like crown mm. chakra um, okay. types of. So the colors, the Wonderful. colors are different. The energy is different on the different colors. Yeah. They'll align with chakras in different ways. Mm -hmm. He's got some root beer, which are really awesome. That's absolute grounding. That's, you know, root chakra. If mm -hmm. you need something to help you put your feet on the ground, get yourself a root beer shaman. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, of the ones that you like were touching and stuff like that, what are the colors that I, so I do healing work, right? And I do grid work and I, I do a lot of different work, but I do a lot of work also with, with the earth. And so she might already have this, she's holding them. So, um, but for the, that kind of work, let's say for my shaman work, where I'm working with someone trying to heal somebody, these kind of things, um, energy work along that line. What colors spoke to you that, that you thought, wow, this is really a healing stone? Well, I'm going to show you a healing wand that was actually okay. given to me by somebody else. And I want to precede that, showing it to you with my opinion about crystals. And first of all, okay. I believe that the less that man manipulates them, polishes, tend to... Um, the more power they have uh, in natural state to me they're energetic beings that need to be left alone however having said that i've seen this is mine it's a healing wand now this is a sea foam on dara and look at all the bubbles in it how dense yeah. it is yeah kathy um gave me this one because she got a new one she got one that's a little bit longer, not quite as dense with bubbles as this, um, but they were in the shape of a wand. So when you asked me about a healing tool, it brought me back in my head. They always come back to that. So again, I, you know how I feel about natural ones? I can tell you what kind of power these have. Because yeah. it healed me. So again, <laughs> and, we've and had, I didn't know that. What we've had do. very similar experiences in the past. I only worked, I don't think I have any of them right here where I can grab them, but I only worked with natural points and I felt the same way. I thought the more natural, the better. And then I decided to take the risk and spend the money on a Vogel, which is a pretty expensive, like a $1,500 crystal. And yes. it's amazing. So like if there, if they, I think in general, natural still to me feels so good to work with. But there are exceptions where people or in this case, whoever, but people have had real breakthroughs on how to work with the crystal. And wow, I mean, it's um, unbelievable, right? Yeah. So I go either way. <laughs> I would I would I would take I would that off your hands. No problem. But I would also <laughs> try to work with a natural. It's one, right? just so. This thing has done incredible things. I'll tell you what, I just have to because we've had so many other things that were just common between us. I'm going to tell you about this one and how I know that it heals. And since my interaction with light beings last summer, um, I know part of what I can do is transmute negative energy into light. And I have some tools that assist me in doing that. Kumu, this hybrid right. that I met last year. I want to talk to you about her. <laughs> we'll, a lot. we'll talk a little. <laughs> anyway, the day that we finally got to sit down in Shasta uh, and get to know one another, at first she had shown me some rocks. They looked like um, they were pieces of obsidian until you really look closely. And then it had like little specks of like blue and green. And oh my God, these are beautiful. 
Well, she said she had gotten there that week on Sunday and that she had pulled these when she visited Middle Earth. Mm. So I took yeah, pictures I that of the ones that she showed me and then she left me with a shard and I went and got confirmation yeah. on the fact that they were special from somebody that, that would have known. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. they weren't, they didn't originate from Middle Earth. <laughs> if I believe what I was told, they yeah. originated from the Heart Nebula. Right. Anyway, um, where was I going with all of this? Oh, um, the bag that she had given them to me in had, you know, that shard and some other dust. And eventually I gave it to Maziba. I kept the shard for myself, but I left the dust with him so he could keep it because he told me where it came from. And his place is probably the best place to archive it for now. Anyhow. Um, he's the crystal shop owner in uh, he, Mount Chester. Yeah. He's he owns one of them. It's off the main drag, but you can tell Masiva's from yeah. somewhere else. I had <laughs> carried it around that plastic bag in my pocket with Epiphany at the end of the day. And after I'd seen Maziba, I came back and I was staying at an Airbnb with Mickey and Kim and Kathy and Celeste. And Kathy, being the kind of sensitive cat that we all know her to be, the kind of really empathic one when when you want to understand energies, get Kathy involved because she can explain it, touch it, understand it. Um, we had all played around on the table and the next day, Kathy was ill, like ill, ill. We were there for the conference and she didn't get up to go you know, with us in the morning because she just couldn't get out of bed. When I finally dug into my pocket to empty it out from the day before, Epiphany looked like she had pepper inside of her. Pepper. I just figured out what happened. That she, while she was in my pocket, drew out whatever negative energy might have been carried in that thing, and Kathy picked up on it too. So until both of those people she cleared and this cleared, um, it didn't have anywhere to transmute. So, you know, if you're familiar with Shasta, I go to get water at the headwaters all the time. It's um, delicious. So when I went to get water the next time, I put her in the stream while I was getting water, cleared her right up. Yeah. Oh, my God. I so, the, so I'm in uh, North Carolina. And we have 100 acres here with a lot of water. And I put my crystals in the in the creeks and the streams and clear them beautifully with the this water originates on my property so it's pristine and yeah there's nothing better than moving I know, clear, right? clear, clear pristine spring water to to yeah. do that um so can we go into kuma a little bit or do you not want to talk about her any i can i'll talk to the degrees that i think i yeah, can i respect that i respect talking that. about so things i should here's here's what's going on with me that things caught my ear so i've been seeing this crystal skull in meditation for a while it started some time ago and i really thought a crystal skull was coming to me it has not but um i had a a I had a soul retrieval done as, uh, as gifted to me by a shaman. And she just sent me the report today. And what's really crazy on it is it says, one of the gifts that spirit wants to give me is a crystal skull. And I was like, how did you know about that? That's pretty crazy, right? So when she mentioned, when you mentioned that she had all these boxes with these pipes and, and uh, you know what the other gift was? time machine and i was like no fucking way i mean seriously time machine and crystal skull i just saw that on lowell's video so um i'm now extremely curious about this stuff right well to, here to i want to touch on the crystal skull yeah first because there was something tied with kumu that wasn't tied to the other crystal skulls that I didn't know any more about them before I had my interaction with Bill Holman <laughs> uh, than I knew about Andara's. Anyhow, um, 
after that episode where Kumu shared those artifacts with us, when we got to Shasta, the night after we had got a chance to get together, she invited me to a ceremony. It was on a private property in Shasta where there's an energetic pyramid, and it's amazing. She's done work there before. She knows the owner, and so she's been there before. And there is definitely some energy that moves back in this area under this pyramid. It was crazy. Um, before the evening took place, and under this pyramid, there's actually four you know, places. There were three people that were there from Miami, and I thought it was a tag along. No, 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 that fourth chair, that was yours, Lowell. So during this is where I kind of had my epiphanies about my connections with Egypt. Um, but before the evening began, she had all those boxes of the artifacts I'd seen before. And she had blankets that she laid out in the middle of it and she put these out. Now this time, last time I saw them, held them, used them. This time they were just there for you to see. So mm -hmm. I didn't really push the issue any because, right. you know, I thought I was blessed to see them in the first Absolutely. place, much yeah. less hold them and take pictures of them. I didn't yeah. know that that was protocol. And with these other people around, I just got the sense that that wasn't what we were here to do. In addition to what I had already seen, she had a blue crystal skull that she claimed was on Dara. No way of me validating any of that, but I'll be damned if I didn't see a blue crystal skull. She had it. And there's a whole story behind how she acquired that. Right. That was fascinating. Uh, <laughs> all these stories are fascinating, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's why everybody thinks I'm crazy at this point. No one can believe anything that's, that's happening, you know? Uh, so what do you, what's your questions? Gosh, I don't even know where to start <laughs> with her. Like that's well, a, I can let me tell you how she came across that skull because that was fascinating okay. to me. Somebody she has a contact, and I believe this guy lives in Turkey, but she's been all over the planet. You know that, and she's got connections everywhere. She's seen these kinds of things before. And so this guy has been a source for some of these artifacts that she's found. Um, and this one came along because somebody else possessed it. I don't know what the terminology and whatever language there was for this, but when you had this, the name of the skull was, um, Un unallowed or a, a something like that. You weren't meant to possess this. Mm. And so the guy was trying to sell it. So he got in touch with this guy in Turkey, this broker and said that he wanted to get rid of it. And he was looking for about six grand for it, which, you know, for something like that wouldn't be ridiculous. Right. Um, so when he reached out to Kumu, Kumu said, yeah, she was interested in it, but she couldn't pay anywhere near that. Well, when the story got back to the guy on what the translation of this name he'd been calling it all was, like a forbidden, that's what the name of it was. <laughs> forbidden was the name of it in a language he couldn't understand. When he found out that's what the name was, he agreed to make it available to her for $99. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you know, he wasn't things, supposed to keep it. These things find a way to go where they need to go, right? So. Yeah. It really, everything else is just uh, very small speed bumps along the way. So, mm -hmm. um, is there any way that I could get in contact with her or, or vice versa or something? Yeah. You know, honestly, I've been trying to think of the last time I heard from her and I reach out to her just to say hi every now and then. I haven't gotten any response since like last November. Okay. Um, and that's not surprising because she's busy all the time. She wants to maintain a low profile. And really, before I she, began to talk about in, her, we had this in, discussion. Is she in Hawaii? or Rarely. Okay. I, she has a home in um, San Francisco. 
um, her ancestors, and yes, she has home in Hawaii, but she's she can be found anywhere on the planet, honestly. Mm -hmm. She travels quite a bit, and okay. she's still busy, you know, clearing. Clearing? Mm -hmm. So she's doing earthwork? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think there's a, a lot of us <laughs> very busy right now. Yeah. Uh, there's some um, interesting space to hold right now. And that's how yeah. I kind of look at it. You know, right. one of these days soon, some of my colleagues and friends that don't know what I've been doing over the last two years and start to read about it are going to wonder, you know, what the hell I'm doing. Well, my response right. is I'm holding space for the rest of you. You just don't understand what that means yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So all interesting. So you got your book out, which is pretty exciting. I'm sure I'll pick up the PDF. Here. It's it's this. It you just need to read the story and the Telos account is in there, and it is miraculous. Yeah. But it's it begins to show the book now shows all my journal entries. So you understand that was phase one. Right. Holy cow, Kumu and light beings, phase two. Right. This year in Chasta, yeah, that was different. Something yeah. else got activated. Everything, there this everything year. at least for me, everything changed in a big way. Probably, I guess, six, seven months ago. Like it really, everything changed. Like I've been, I woke up in 2012. And I, I'm a rocket scientist, right? So my background is not this. <laughs> and uh, I had an instantaneous past life memory that blew my mind and, and blew up my life. And started on a crazy journey with some really crazy stories. Uh, I, I don't know whose would be crazier, but um, I thought I understood what I was doing, right? I thought I understood where I was going with it. And I thought it was primarily healing. And like seven months ago, everything changed. All my direction changed, what I'm doing, when I'm, how I do things, where I do things, all completely different than it was. I mean, like not even related. In fact, I was told that my, I was closing that, particular chapter which was associated with a particular group and it was now time for me to move into the real reason why i was here so all that stuff i was doing that i thought was my main thing was just getting me ready to be able to start <laughs> this start this kind of shit right yeah so um, i'm now um people are coming across my path you know uh, you know how the universe works and uh i knew when i saw you i was in fact i feel like this one-on-one -on -one is a gift from the universe for me and i appreciate it i'm sorry that i ruined your zoom but, but i appreciate what the universe no did. no you did not because but, anybody else had the same zoom link and so it, this was meant to be this way yeah, it today. Was meant to be. and that's it was great so this kind of stuff has been happening you know quite a bit like it does for you right people that i shouldn't have a one-on-one -on -one with you just like you shouldn't have touched all of her or something got so intimately involved right so this is what's supposed to happen. We are, things are happening. Things are rocking. We're just rolling. <laughs> That's, I keep hearing from people whose awakening is happening at such a rapid rate. Yeah. Um, man, look at, I know how long it's been for me, really, since this really kicked in. Tell us, it's been two years since mm -hmm. that happened. And it just, I, it just cracked open my awareness to all this dimensional activity that now yeah. I get to tune into. And yes. what I get to do is now the rest of you that are coming on so quickly, and we know why, because this shift in Earth's consciousness is right around the corner. Yeah. And it's, we're trying to scramble to make sure our right. vibrations are matching. So right. I want to ascend. There are those that might not want to, and that's great. That's their choice. They're sovereign beings, and I love them, and away they right. go. They're learning their own lessons. But sure. we've been 
fooled to believe that our journeys were supposed to be like a lot of other people's. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Our little souls were here to help the universe evolve. This is our job. So we came and signed up to learn lessons, good ones and bad ones. And that is why this whole experiment to learn duality and drop into physicality, that's why we're here. Good right. news, experiment's over. Time to go. Now, why do you think so many people's DNA are waking up to things that they didn't know that they knew, but now they know better? It, here's the reason why. Otherwise, why would guys that was in the hospitality business, six figures, good perks, why would I change any of that right. Right. to go off and do this? Because yeah, well, I, I was supposed I, to. It's funny. I had just sold my last business right in 2010. And I thought I'd sit on a beach the rest of my life. Like we, we owned a big horse ranch that I was tired of. And so I thought, well, we'll transition out of this. I'll go buy a place on the beach, on the beach. And, you know, that's, you know, nice restaurants. And I mean, like, you know, I got to think, boy, no, didn't work out. <laughs> that wasn't the plan out. for you. But when I say that, and when we both look at this and, um, <laughs> kind of box it in as this is what the universe had in mind for you. No, it wasn't. You manifest everything you end up getting. Yeah. So yeah. if you once you That's master right. that idea and oh, focus absolutely. your intent in that way, yeah, I know. I know. Shows up. I know. Now everything happens for a reason, and I'm the reason. So it's yeah. like I'm I'm manifesting. I'm a I've become a manifestor big time right especially with healings and stuff so and here's the way i see it a little so 100 years ago 200 years ago to change your story would have meant sitting in a cave somewhere for 20 hours a day for three decades to change your consciousness to a point where you could do something like that it's not that way anymore. I mean, I woke mm. up, I wasn't looking, I wasn't wanting, I got plucked, right? Like I got plucked right out of my story and dropped into a new story. The way that I see it is, I, I'm a big predestination guy. Like I believe everything happens for a reason along a path and nothing else can happen. That's a timeline. And so the way that I see it is, we are on these timelines and I have some physical proof of it that's crazy. But now, for the first time ever, let's say you're on a train track. You can't change. You can't steer. There's no steering wheel. You're rolling, right? 20 years ago, the next train track was 20 miles away. If you wanted to jump onto that train for that experience, a lot of work. A lot of work. Now, we're in the station. The trip's over. All the trains are lined up. All the timelines are collapsing. It, it's it's wrap-up time here, Okay. Now, if you want to change trains, you just step off the train and you step on the next train. Like when I want to change something, I just step on the next train. That has never existed in humanities. It's not me. It's time. It's where we are. It's what's going on, right? You know, so that's a really yes. lovely way to put it. I'd never really heard, heard it put that way. But man, that couldn't have been more right. Right. So, I mean, this was taught to me by a much higher entity than me. So it's not like uh, I can take much credit for it. This is how it was given to me. So now today, it's a, it, I really think that, you know, it's like everybody's about to get taken off. Everybody's about to get boarded, right? This is my extrapolation of what I just told you from. Uh, did, you kind of broke up a little bit. So would you repeat okay. that again? So when, yeah. this, when well, we save it, so time, people know what so the point the is. The trip is over, right? Time, we're at the very end of our ticket. So we have a ticket. We were on a train. We're all coming to this station. We're going to get off and we're going to go somewhere. Okay. We're not going to be on a train. Not this earth train. We're going to change trains. We're going to change more than trains. Maybe we're going to get on a flight, right? So during this brief period of time that we've got left, and I saw I saw in a vision years ago, these two, I saw Earth, and she split into and pulled apart. And the old Earth looked a lot like Earth now. 
The new earth looked nothing like her. In fact, the colors I saw, I still cannot articulate. I don't know what colors I saw. They don't exist, right? It's like trying to tell someone that's only seen red to describe green. It's like, it doesn't work that way, right? So I know this split is about to happen. And, and after I saw the vision and I did a lot of, you know, I read like crazy, that's just how I am. So I read, mm -hmm. you know, raw material and stuff and I started to understand how this might go, you know, and how every tradition describes this kind of event that is coming. So I think that what we have been given is a short period of time to try to bring as many people on board as possible. Not that I feel that as a um, responsibility burden thing. It just is, okay? I. It just well, yeah, I do. I, I think yeah. it's an obligation. Yeah. When, well, when it would be we get it at this level, it, then it we're be, obligated. It it's only an obligation in the sense that it would be wrong for me. It would be bad for my soul if I now turned away from this and ignored it. If I said, you know what, I'm just going to go to the beach. <laughs> I get it. I got it. I'm in. Great. Uh, I'll just wait for the, you know, for the whatever is going to be the is the event that makes it happen right of course that would not serve my my no story. your soul already knows better than that and that yeah, whole yeah, description yeah. wasn't who you were in the first yeah. place <laughs> but but i don't have a messiah complex is what i'm saying so i don't feel a need to go save people to go bring people into the ark right i am right. here i'm available i can i i talk to everybody i mean I talk to all my neighbors. Everybody here thinks I'm a kook, right? Uh, because I'm in like Southern Baptist territory. So, but I I tell everybody what I do, how I do it, what's happened to me, what my story is. Wow, I don't understand everything, but here's what's happened to me. Maybe explore it, you know, maybe look into it. And sometimes I find people, right? Sometimes I find people that are ready for that, are wanting that, that kind of thing. That's the responsibility that you're talking about. I have a responsibility right. to be a lamp and what's drawn to me, not my responsibility, not my job. Exactly. Right? And I, it's not your job really to think that I have to turn on the light for those people. No, no, no. You just shine it. And then it's up to them to do the translation I, and be I, discerning I, about it. I am light. Right. Yeah. So, yes. That's I what just all am. this is about. I just am. So that's all I got to do is be. And really, all I have to do is trust and take every next step. When something comes across my path, I know when it's the I know when it's mine. I know when it's calling me. My only job is to keep moving, to keep trusting and, and not like you said, not clam up, right? Not mm -hmm. not hide. So I'm going to repeat what you said because it was like profound and I want other people to understand that too. We are light. And what did you follow that up with? <laughs> Since I channel a lot, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but I, I think that what I said was something on the line was uh, I am light. So I don't have to. I'm already light. It, it just comes. It, it, I am. It is what I am. I am light. I mean, it's like it's like telling, you know, it's like telling light to be dark. It doesn't work that way. It, it just mm -hmm. light is light. It, it, and we're all light beings. I mean, you you've seen light beings, but you are a light being, right? You're a multidimensional. Absolutely. Being, a huge multidimensional. Being. We all are. That's yes. what I oh, If there is a way that this information can get out there enough. So people can really hear it and then decide for themselves whether you want to believe that you're all exactly. energy and that you're light, because exactly. I'm telling you, you are. Right. No one's ever presented us with that information before. What yes. schooling told us about any of this? Yeah, nobody did. And right. I don't know why that is, yeah. but we're learning things on our own, aren't we? Because yeah. we're supposed to remember it. But again, this is timing, right? So... There have always been mystery schools, and I've studied many of them. There have always been mystery schools out there. There have always been people who had an extra in-depth understanding of reality, the real reality. 
which isn't what most people live in, okay? It wasn't time. These big cycles, these big earth cycles, there's no changing them. They, they, they take the same amount of time, no matter what you and I do. We are not changing right. that cycle. Okay? <laughs> All we are are we are here, and we came here wanting to be here at this cycle. I know that about me. I chose to do this at a soul level, to be here now, to help, okay? Yes. Not to be responsible for, but to be the point that goes, hey, look at that. What do you think that is? In your case, like the Andara, right? You pointed to an Andara for me. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I need to go get one of those and I need to try it out, right? We've so, left triggers for ourselves along the way. Yes, and yes. That's we how don't I woke come up. across that's how I woke by up. coincidence. The, exactly. So you the, this planted is, this is, this is a, out there to remind me. I will share this one brief story because I don't want to go into my stuff. But so I'm an aerospace engineer. I sell my company. I decided to get into the web stuff so I can sit on a beach and live wherever I want to do that kind of stuff, right? So I bought this expensive site and it got hacked and it went down and my backup they didn't have it i paid them to have a backup they didn't have it right so i'm i'm working day and night trying to fix this thing with a person in canada okay so we're working day and night day and night <laughs> on like trying to fix it she who is now my the mother of my children and my partner so she is working with me and i'd worked with her she'd done work for me before and uh, you know, she was just a person. She was this person in Canada that did work for me. That night, she's getting really tired. We're working, 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 working. She reaches up and pulls off her glasses. I'd never seen her without glasses before. She pulls off her glasses. She's looking down. She rubs her eyes. She looks up. There's a mole on the side of her head or, or on the side of her nose I'd never seen. When I saw that mole, it was the same mole she had in a past life. And I instantly downloaded a past life memory. I had mm -hmm. never been, I was an atheist, okay? This was completely foreign to me. So that was the, okay, let's get going. Here we go. Why do you think it resonated with you then when in the past you might've had those kind of intuitions and didn't even pay any attention to them? It wasn't time. Everything is perfect. There. There was no reason for it to resonate. Nothing in the story that I need to, in the story of Steve, that I have to, I'm on my train, I'm on my track. I have a story of Steve that gets me to where I need to go. On that story of Steve, there was no reason for it to happen before 2012. With it happening in 2012, I had time to chase all the, what is this? Is reincarnation real? This is crazy. I better look into Buddhism. I better look into Hinduism. I better look into Taoism. I better look into all these isms, right? That took time. So that oh. took me years to get through. I better learn to meditate. I better figure out what all this stuff is and then start having crazy experiences. Each one just enough to get me to the next step that I needed to do. And like this shaman class, I mean, now it was crazy. I had a photo of a tree here six years ago that has a mushroom on it that looks just like a sculpture of a white squirrel with nuts with a shaman behind him on the tree, okay? I'm literally, it's a picture. It looks like it was a tree that disappeared. Can't find it again, but it existed for a moment for me to take a picture. And I have a semi-photographic memory. So six years later, I hear a shaman's coming and you're going to learn shamanism. You're going to shaman school kind of thing. Basically, I, I was going to get initiated. So I was like, okay, well, if he's coming, I don't have to go anywhere. So I'm just going to keep doing what I do, right? Three days later, my partner comes in and goes, hey, you were talking about shamanism, right? Because I said, you know, I just heard it. I said, yeah. She goes, some people just moved here. They've opened a shaman school. It's literally down the road. And here's the guy's profile picture. The guy's profile picture is he standing behind a big giant white squirrel with white nuts around. It's a sculpture. 
and he's standing right behind it. And I'm like, you got to be shitting. I mean, how did that, you project that? That is crazy shit. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to a school. And, oh, and one person dropped out of the school. They were full for the year. They were full before they moved. Got here. One person backed out. They were posting locally. Does anybody want to take this? Because there was no time left for anybody to show up, right? So literally, just like this Zoom. So you were a walk-in. Uh, yeah, I was a walk-in. <laughs> <laughs> I was a walk-in. So it was wow. crazy, right? It was really crazy. And that's that. This experience with I was like, I don't even need to go to shamanism. Why do I need to do that? I already do energy work. I already. I'm a psychic medium i you know i mean why do i need to it seemed like a back step kind of to me no everything i'm learning in there it's like whoa i needed that right or i need to help someone in that class a lot so you know I mean, that's it, another perspective to get another keep perspective in mind that sometime your presence in a situation wasn't right. meant for you it was right. meant for somebody else right. to get something out of it. And right. your presence was required. Right. So everything happens for a reason. In fact, the very first words I heard in meditation was everything happens for a reason. Heard it clears a bell. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's a good rule to remember moving forward. It's, it was a good first rule in my book, right? So, yeah, that's fun. Fun. I really appreciate your time really really very much so i'm happy that we had it i'm posting this regardless because there was there's good information in what you shared believe me steve every time i do one of these um and i'm glad to kind of be the facilitator but in the end the reason there are exchanges is because there's perspectives that you guys have got that yeah. need to be shared as well yeah. i yes. just kind of get to be the observer and that right. is when I get my juice. When I get to right. see somebody else kind of get it, right. man, that's what I'm right. here to do now. I totally agree. I learn from everyone. Everybody. So do I. Awake or not, I learn from everyone. They're, it's such a magical time. It's a crazy, crazy magical time. It's, yes, it if is. you have eyes to see, if you can open your eyes and learn to see what's going on, with everybody and everything around you it's amazing crazy i've beautiful. said that if once you have the time to pay attention to everything and you can quiet yourself so yes. that you can get to that place where you can connect with spirit then watch what shows up you'll yeah. crave those quiet places yes. because you're going to want to see where she's going to take you next and right. it's crazy and what a time even for someone to start, it's going to be so fast for people right now. I mean, it's taken me 10 years to get here. I guarantee you right now, people getting dropped in right now, it's going to be like hyperspeed. Like yeah. their, their it, acceleration is going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. All the more reason why you and I are getting pounded with these things. We remember, again, it's just recall. It it's just, not, we're not yeah, learning anything right. new. These all of things all of were these at my things, disposal before. All of these things we've done in I, past life. I, I'll show you something interesting. I'll just grab something right here. So I was in a crystal shop. <laughs> not surprising, right? Um, I was in a crystal shop last week where we were in another town over here. And I just go in and peek around. I don't usually get anything anymore. But um, so I went into this grocery shop and I saw they only had one set of these things. They're shungite. So I, they had these rods, right? These rods. <laughs> Never seen them before. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, that's Egyptian. And I know what to do with them. Right. Memory from things I've read and things I was. I was there. Right. I was I was an astrologer basically in in Egypt, and so these things are amazing too. But there was one set; it was there for me. I saw it, knew it was for me. It's just like everything else, right? Perfectly dropped in at exactly the time when I needed it, and like you said, already carrying the program, already carrying the information. It's right. just something. 
something's got to uh, Carry it. The trigger it. Yeah, right. The I've file. got to share with you really quick, and then I'm glad you did that because we're going to close there. But uh, okay. I have friends in um, Shasta, and their property is amazing. Uh, the healing place. It's Jamie Lee and Corey's, but this story is about Corey. Because the last time I was there, which was about a month ago, Corey had shown me, guess what? A piece of Shanghai that yeah. he was drawn to in a place yeah. where he had just seen it among everything else there. He was drawn to this one piece and knew that he had to get it. Didn't yeah. really know what it was <laughs> and found out that it wasn't what he thought it was going to cost. It was going to end up costing more. But nonetheless, when he got at home, he knew what it was and what it was supposed to be. Yeah, It was exactly yeah. what you found. Cool. And it happened to be round and purple, too. So take it from there. Very cool. Great. Crazy. Well, thank you, thank you. for your contributions. And uh, I'll, I'll see you, Ron. You know how to reach me or I'll see you on Sunday or on Thursday. Right here. Uh, those are your podcasts? Those are going to be regular Starbucks Mystery School podcasts are going to be plugged in Sunday mornings at 9 Pacific and Thursdays at 4 Pacific. Are you and gonna make those they'll available? be posted on YouTube. Oh, yes. So they'll be posted. Outside your post website. Them. Yes. Great. All Great. right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. You have, a have an awesome evening. day. Bye-bye. Thanks.